come back chapter 6 section 62 here we look at binomial probabilities what are the focus points in this particular section list the defining features of a binomial experiment compute binomial probabilities using the formula p of r successes is combination n choose r p to the r q to the n minus r use the binomial table to find p of r use the binomial probability distribution to solve real world applications all right here is a binomial experiment on a tv game show each contestant has a try at the wheel of fortune the wheel of fortune is a roulette wheel with 36 slots one of which is gold if the ball lands in the gold slot the contestant wins fifty thousand dollars no other slot pays what is the probability that the game show will have to pay the fortune to three contestants out of 100 what is the probability that the game show will have to pay the fortune to three contestants out of 100 in this problem the contestant and the game show sponsors are concerned only about two outcomes from the wheel of fortune the ball lands on the gold or the ball does not land on the gold so the in all you have 36 slots only one of which is a gold the rest is not gold okay so this problem is typical of an entire class of problems that are characterized by the feature that there are exactly two possible outcomes only two possible outcomes for each trial of interest these problems are called binomial export experiments or Bernoulli export experiments after the Swiss mathematician Jacob Bernoulli who studied them extensively in the late 1600s what are the features of a binomial experiment there if say fixed number of trials we denote this number by the letter n the n trials are independent and repeated under identical conditions each trial has only two outcomes success and failure each individual trial the probability of success is the same we denote the probability of success by little p and that of failure by little q since each trial results in either success or failure p plus q is 1 which means q is 1 minus p the central problem of a binomial experiment is to find the probability of r successes out of n trials okay so you are going to repeat the same experiment n times that is what it means to say fixed number of trials we denote it by n these n trials are independent and repeated under identical conditions in each attempt or in each trial you have two outcomes success denoted by s failure denoted by f probability of success is denoted by p probability of failure is denoted by q p plus q is 1 or another way of saying this q is 1 minus p so after n attempts you want to see the probability of obtaining r successes all right so let's look at our wheel of fortune problem you have 100 contestants so n is 100 assuming the wheel is fair that that is fair among different contestants so the trials are independent 
says the result of one spin of the wheel has no effect on the result of other spins. We are interested in only two outcomes on each spin. Ball la either lands on the goal or it does not. Landing on the goal is success for us. Not landing on the goal is failure for us. In general, the assignment of the terms success and failure to outcomes does not imply good or bad results. It's just what you want. These terms are assigned simply for the user's convenience. On each trial, the probability of success is 1 out of 36 because there are 36 slots out of which 1 is gold. So 1 out of 36 is the probability little p of success. So what is q? That is probability of failure. It is 1 minus p. 1 minus 1 over 36, that is 35 over 36. Seen another way, only 1 is a success out of 36. So 35 will be a failure out of 36. We want to know the probability of 3 successes out of 100 trials. So in this example, it turns out that the probability the quiz show will have to pay the fortune to three contestants out of 100 is 0 0.23. How did we even arrive at this? We will see in future, in, soon enough. Computing probabilities for a binomial experiment using binomial distribution formula. The central problem for, of a binomial experiment is finding the probability of R successes out of N trials. Now we'll see how to find these probabilities. Suppose you are taking a timed final exam. You have three multiple choice questions left to do. Okay, three multiple choice questions left to do. Each question has four suggested answers and only one of the answers is correct. You have only five seconds left to do these questions. So you decide to mark on the answer sheet without even reading the questions. All right. So what are we doing? We are simply guessing three answers to three questions. All right. Assuming that your answers are randomly selected, what is the probability that you get zero, one or two or all the three questions correctly? This is a binomial experiment. You see, each question can be thought of as a trial. There are three trials, n equals three. Possible outcomes on each trial are either a success, S, indicating correct response or a failure, F, meaning a wrong answer. The trials are independent because just because you answered the first question correctly, doesn't mean you are going to answer the second question correctly. You are simply guessing at this point, right? So the outcome of any one trial does not affect the outcome of the others. What is the probability of success on any one question? Since you are guessing, there are four answers for each question from which you are selecting one. So one out of four is correct. One out of 4 is 0 0.25. 1 out of 4 is a quarter. A quarter is a 25 cents coin. Yes. So 3 out of 4 are incorrect. So 3 quarters is probability of failure. 3 quarter is 75 cents. So now let's, in short, n is 3 because you have 3 questions in all. Probability of success is 0.25 because it's a multiple choice question. Each question is a multiple choice with four answers, four choices out of which one is correct. So probability of success is 0.25. Probability of failure is 0.75. Now what are the possible outcomes in terms of success or failure for these three trials? We use the notation. SSF to mean success on the first 
success on the second and failure on the third. So this is a sequence. SSF means two successes followed by a failure. So we are going to use such notations to figure out combinations of successes and failures. All three successes, two successes followed by failure, success, failure, success, failure, so on. Okay, you can get these, by the way, using your tree diagram, all right? To compute the probability of each outcome, we can use the multiplication law. For instance, probability of success, success, failure is probability first success, probability second success, probability failure. Probability of success is P, probability of success is P, probability of failure is Q. So P squared Q. So you see, as many successes you have, those many P's you will have. All right. Probability of success is 0.25. You are squaring it, multiplying to probability of failure. That's what they approximate. So therefore, you have probability distribution now, okay, for a binomial experiment. That's your outcome. That's your probability that's your outcome that's your probability and so on okay so r represents number of successes three successes and so on okay so this is your random variable and this is the probability for each random variable once you have you want to compute the probability of r successes so suppose r is 0 1 or 2 or 3 for example, how will you find probability of one, right? One is success. One success happens in these three fashion. There is only one success, so two failures, these three fashions. So probability of one is probability this happens or this happens or this happens. So add these probabilities, you get 3pq squared, and that's your probability. Okay, so zero success, one success, two success, three success. So this, this is the table how to get zero success, means all failures. One success, we just saw. Two successes, here are the three options. All right, that's why you have three, by the way, right? Three successes, this is the only way, and so on. You found the probability. Number of successes to probability. This is your probability distribution. All right, this is the formula for R successes when you have N trials. The previous case, you had only three trials, right? In general, if you have N trial, you get a combination. P to the R because you want R successes and Q to the N minus R because R successes implies N minus R failures. So we will continue on this slide in the next video. Until then.